In this video, we are going to cover the concept of the effective torque, also known as the net torque. Recall from our discussion on linear kinetics, the tug of war example, where we had a box that was being pulled to the right by F1 and pulled to the left by F2. We said that if F1 and F2 were equal in magnitude and opposite in directions, and if we put the tip of one to the tail of the other, that the net force or the effective force would be zero. So we would have a zero vector down there in the bottom. And if we had a zero effective force, we would have a zero acceleration. And in a case where the box was stationary, the box wouldn't move. Now, if F1 were larger than F2, that would cause the box to accelerate to the right. And we determine that by, again, putting the tip of one vector to the tail of the other. And then from the tail of the first to the tip of the second, would be our effective force vector. That effective force vector is going from left to right, so we would also have an acceleration that went from left to right. Finally, if F2 was larger than F1, we would see that the box would accelerate to the left. And again, if we looked at our two force vectors and we put the tip of one next to the tail of the other, and then we drew a vector that went from the tail of the first to the tip of the second, that would be our effective force vector. In this case, that effective force vector is going from right to left, so we have an acceleration that also goes from right to left. The same idea can be applied to torque. In this particular case, we have two forces, F1 that's going to be to the left of a pivot point, and F2 that's going to be the right of a pivot point. I hope everyone can appreciate that F1 is going to create a counterclockwise torque about the pivot point while F2 is going to create a clockwise torque about the pivot point. Now, if the torque created by F1 and the torque created by F2 are equal, and it would be equal if the magnitude of the two forces were the same, and if those two forces were equidistant away from that pivot point, then the effective torque would end up being zero. And if the effective torque is zero, our angular acceleration would also be zero. Now let's take a case where F1 and F2 are going to be equal in magnitude, but we're going to push F1 a little bit further out away from that pivot point. Again, I hope everybody can appreciate that that's going to cause our seesaw in this example to have an angular acceleration that is going to be in a counterclockwise direction. So again, we can see the torque produced by F1 is going to be larger than the torque produced by F2, and our net torque or our effective torque is going to be less than the torque created by F1, but it's still going to be in that counterclockwise direction. And since we have an effective torque that's in the counterclockwise direction, we're also going to have an angular acceleration that's going to be in that counterclockwise direction. Similarly, if F2 is further away from the axis of rotation or that pivot point than is F1, then we are going to have an angular acceleration that's going to cause our seesaw to rotate in the clockwise direction. So here we have a situation where the torque created by F2 is larger than the torque created by F1. So when we subtract one torque from the other, we're left with a residual or an effective torque that's going to be in the clockwise direction. And so we're also going to have an angular acceleration that's in that clockwise direction. I hope you can appreciate that determining the effective torque is very similar to determine the effective force. We're going to take all the torques that are acting on a particular body and we're going to sum them together. 